This looks so big on me. <laughs> Look, I'm wearing a potato sack. <laughs> I tell all my friends about you and I keep putting on. Hi, so today I'm going to be reviewing the new 3C Mood Recipe Collection. And as you guys have seen, I do like to review like new collections in the form of like a get ready with me. So as I'm using them, I'll talk about each one. So that's that's it. That's all we're doing. So I think they've had Mood Recipe before, but they've updated it with more items. I think, I, I don't know. But they've got three new palettes. They've got three blushes and they've come out with five lipsticks and they all have like these sort of like brown, burnt orange, clementine, really warm, very thanksgivey sorts of colors. And they also have um, their milk collection of skincare. And oh my God, isn't the packaging so cute? You literally cannot even see that. They have a line of skincare that I have reviewed a long time ago. They have like this milk mask to foam pack cleanser. Um, and then they have some other milk stuff like a whitening cushion and all that but they came out with these moisturizing products and uh, I actually brought a lot of this stuff with me to California. So I was able to really test them and see how I feel about um, all the products. So I'm actually also gonna review the skincare as well. You guys, this packaging is like the cutest packaging ever. This is the 3CD White Mill Liquid Drill Cotton Puff. It looks like a carton of milk and at the bottom you can actually rip the front off and it makes it like a dispenser for these cotton sheets. And these are the kinds of cotton sheets that um, the really thin kinds that you're technically supposed to put like essence or something and then it allows you to stick to your face and i really like this because they're stiffer than most cotton sheets and because they're so thin you actually require less product but it actually holds the product really well so your toner a little bit goes much longer way of course this is not the only brand that has these every brand has them now this is the peeling toner there are two toners that i oh this is awesome there are two toners. This is the peeling one, and there's like one I think is just for moisturizing. I got this one because y'all know I do not have a complete skincare routine without a toner that is um, gonna exfoliate my skin, and my skin produces dead skin really quickly, so I need to use it morning and night. Not necessarily physical exfoliants, but like acid toners like this. And surprisingly, I was expecting this to smell more like an acid toner, like that really chemi not chemically, and not really alcoholic smell, but like a strong smell. But it also has, uh, just like the other skincare in here, it has a bit of like a milk smell. It, all the skincare smells like milk. Oh my god, I was so into wiping my face with that thing that I forgot to actually review the product, but I really, really enjoy the toner. Um, I put it up there along with my Misha pads and made like Neogen ones and you know, all my favorite acid toners. Cause I was using a toner before that wasn't really working for my skin. And so I started breaking out again. But as soon as I started using this, um, not only did it subside those, but it also just really smoothed out my skin texture overall. And I actually think that if you are into the idea of acid toning, but you don't want something that's too drying on the skin, I do notice it's actually quite moisturizing compared to the other ones. Like it effectively exfoliates my skin, but I'm not left with that kind of like I used alcohol feeling, if you know what I mean. But the concept of this line of skincare is supposed to be, um, it's just supposed to give you smooth, moisturized skin. Now, I don't really recommend this for people with acne prone skin. I think you should deal with that separately. But if you're looking for the type of skincare that will just, um, if you have kind of like rough skin um, and you know, maybe you're dehydrated or you're dry or maybe combination, I really, really recommend this line of skincare because it's pretty much everything that I've been using um, on the daily for the past, since I got it. Now, again, other than like the peeling toner, which is what I just used, there isn't really any products in here that are meant to like do anything to your skin other than moisturize. So again, if you have acne prone skin or some other issues like wrinkles, sunspots or something that you need to take care of, I wouldn't necessarily go for this line. It's mostly just for like moisture. If you have the other version of the toner, you can actually just dunk these with that and stick them to your face as a kind of like mini sheet mask in the morning if you want. And then I'm gonna go in with the, what is this? The Glossy Essence. And this is just one of those dropper type ampule essences. And honestly, I, it's just a moisturizing essence, I guess. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I generally reserve my essences to the ones that, um, oh my God, that are meant for like doing something to your skin, maybe like anti-aging or like dealing with uneven skin tone. And really, I've just been using this in tandem with the moisturizer that um, comes with the line and they work pretty well together. Um, I guess what I would say is if you have oily skin or co more combination or in general, you don't really like feeling heavy creams, then I would go with that one because it is the, a thinner formula because you, you could see it was like really runny and watery, but it has like, in fact, this whole line, it's very, how do you describe it? It's the type of skincare that it's not too thick, but it gives you that rich moisture 
from like a thick moisturizer, if that makes sense. So if you have oily skin and you don't really like the feeling of like heavy moisturizers, but you want the hydration, the Glossy Essence is definitely something I'd recommend. If you have dry skin or you just you just like using a moisturizer, then the facial cream is like, you know, a good uh, follow up to that. This is what it looks like. I mean, there isn't really like anything mind blowing about this collection. I've just been really into it because it is getting drier. And also it's pretty dry in America, to be honest. I did kind of go into using the skincare line thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's just moisturizing. It's not going to do much. But I do like the fact that every time I use it, my skin does feel much smoother and makeup just tends to glide on much faster. And um, in general, I don't really have like dry spots anymore. Not that I really had them in the first place, but uh, I had a really big, cause I actually took out, I took out the filler in my chin and the skin here has been getting so much better. Cause you guys know I've been suffering from that dry ass looking chin for like four months. So I finally took it out, but uh, it just gives you like a really glossy look to the skin. So if you, if that's what you want, that's what you're looking for. I'll definitely maybe look at more reviews because I wouldn't rely on just mine unless you're that type of person. But do I like this line of skincare? Definitely, I'm probably gonna be using it until it's Oh God, which is not a thing that I usually do. So for the next part, I'm just gonna quickly do my base makeup and my eyebrows. I'm not gonna really explain much. I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through it. But if you wanna skip it, go to this uh, time marker and I will see you there. Okay, so let's get started with the thing I think most people would be excited for are the eyeshadow palettes. You have hashtag smoother. It's a palette built mostly of, it's, it's actually all mattes. Yeah, you've got a nice range of light shades here, some medium tones, and a few like deeper tones to help define the eye. But um, if you're the type of person that likes natural makeup, then um, I would definitely go with this. Then here we've got hashtag overtake. This one is my favorite pa uh, parrot, parrot. Personally, um, I do. You do have the few mattes here for kind of like kind of like base or like uh, crease color if you do American makeup. Really high shimmer shades right here. You've got some, some satin shades here and you've got uh, more, I wouldn't say glittery, but it's, they're kind of like satin, but the shimmers that are in it are really thick, so they're almost like glitter. But it's pretty much just like if you took this palette and added a little bit of shimmer to some of the shades in it, then this is the palette that you would get. There is slight more color variation though, so uh, there's this one. And then we've got hashtag plot twist. I actually haven't dipped into this one yet. I actually brought the other two to America with me. I left this here behind because um, I like the aesthetic of this palette, but I didn't see myself using all these glitter shades. And as you can see, out of all the pa other palettes, this has the most like glittery, shimmery shades in here. Here you've got like three mattes, and then you've got a satin shade up in here. But for the rest of the shades, they're all pretty much like that really glittery, shimmery, like sorts of shadows. Now, while I think you can create a whole look with this, I feel like for me, it would be more of a palette that I would use in conjunction with something else. So let's talk about some pros and cons. Pros, absolutely amazing pigmentation even for Korean eyeshadow. I do have to stress that. Um, when I, re I review K-Beauty, and the thing is, um, a lot of the pigmentation for a good eyeshadow palette in Korea would not be the same as like in America, because that's just a thing. Korean girls just prefer not to have such strong eyeshadow colors. Of course, there are, I'm sure there are some people that are like it, but for like the vast majority, they prefer more like soft, colors, even if that means being less pigmented than, let's say, something that you'd find in Sephora, maybe. So while I wouldn't call this like an Urban Decay Naked Heat palette, this is really, the, the pigment in here is like really strong. So I find myself having to use only like a tiny bit. I just have to dip my brush in. And that's the thing though, is that these shadows are super, super powdery. Like they kick up a lot. So um, I think that's fine because the pigment is there. It'd be a whole different story if the pigmentation was like really lacking, but it would be super powdery and like 
all this powder so it'd be a waste of time but that's not the case with this all i have to do is kind of touch my brush in there like one or two times kind of pat it in and then like uh, either tap off the excess or kind of get some off on the back of my hand back of my hand and i find that they work great they blend super super smoothly but that's the thing they're so blendable and smooth that if you start to layer too many colors on then they might end up looking like each other so for me i kind of just stick to three maybe two two three four shades and because my eyelids are hooded and oily, I do use a primer with them always, and with that I find they last all day. If you have normal dry skin, you might find that these work much better on you and they last um, just as long without a primer. And also real quick, the swipe test. If I swipe it with this uh, wet wipe, and if it stains the skin, that means it has pretty decent stain power. So it's rubbing pretty hard. Obviously the, the lighter shades kind of disappeared, but the deeper shades are still pretty there. So the packaging feels really substantial. The um, It's not a magnet, but it's like a you know, a clicky type of package and it's, it feels really well built. And the, um, what is it? The packaging here itself is like a really soft matte finish and you know, it feels really nice to hold in the hand. The only thing I dislike about this palette though, a palette though, is the fact that these shadows are so freaking soft that the rough, like opening it like ruptures the packaging. And as you probably already saw, it causes the shadows to break. The thing is I actually dropped this and not even from that high. I dropped it off my bed and these two shadows here cracked a little bit on the corners but this shadow itself here was cracking on its own anyway even from just like opening and closing the package and I was being careful but it's so strongly shut that um, when you do open it, it like like shakes the package and it causes that shade. Yeah, but these ones, this one I didn't really notice that at all. It's still like intact obviously, but this one I'll tell you that. So if you happen to get this palette, do be aware of that you need to be careful with all of these shadows that you don't drop them or like, you know, put them in purse, a purse where it's going to be shaking around too much. But as long as you're careful, they should be fine. I'm just happy that the whole of the shadow did not like break. So I'm going to create the look that I had in my Monster X, no, no, my Red Velvet uh, Peekaboo makeup reaction video because a lot of people seem to like that look and I was actually using this palette from that. Um, the only thing different is I'm not going to use eyeliner. I'm going to use one of these shadows as liner because that's kind of a trend in Korea lately is to use shadows eyeliner. And I'm going to go into this base shadow here so you can see all the powder in the air. And then I'm going to take this shade in the middle right here. It's kind of... How do you describe that? It's like a, it's like a pink and red, but there's a lot of like really gold, almost like greenish gold shimmers in there. And this is a very, it's a, she's a very strong color. So, and then I'm gonna take this kind of like chocolatey raspberry shade right here. It also has the same kind of like goldy, greeny shimmers in it. I'm taking the first color that we already used, and kind of going on this fluffy brush to kind of blend out the edge. Now if you look at the ad campaign for this collection, she had like one eyeshadow on and that has also been like a trend lately. It's just like one eyeshadow, maybe some eyeliner, but uh, that's not me. And then I'm gonna take this brown here. It has like a red undertone to it and I'm using it on a smudging brush and I'm gonna place that on the lower... Actually, I'm gonna use it on my lower lash line here as I usually do and I'm gonna use it to kind of line my eyes. And then to kind of highlight, oh my. and then to kind of highlight around my eyes, I'm gonna take a, this coppery shimmer. Oh god, I fucking love this color. Oh my god, and I'm gonna place that on the center of my lids, close to the lash line, just right there. These shimmers are so fine. They make they look like wet eyeshadow, kind of like the Urban Decay Moon Shadow one that I used in that uh, Monster X. Tutorial I did a long, long time ago. And then I'm gonna take the more pink champagne-y kind of uh, color and use it on my pinky finger and place that just on the inner corner. And this look I literally wore like every day that I was in California, except I think then I did use actual eyeliner. All right, so I'm just making sure everything else is blended and I'm pretty much done with the eye look. Oh my God, make sure it keeps going back into my sweater vest. And then with the collection, they've got three blushes. This one is hashtag rose beige. I do like to use all of them depending on the look that I'm going for, but this is the one I reach for the most because it kind of just has that sort of boyish look to it. You know, there's some boys that have like kind of like natural, like not just contour, but like that 
not blush either. It's like a color on their cheek that almost mimics that. Because my friend looked at it, he's like, that's like the color of my cheeks. I was like, okay. And then we've got mono pink right here. This is like a soft muted pink. It's not too bright. It's just more on the neutral side. Here we've got nude peach. Um, it's peach, just like it looks like its name. And here they are together in that same order. This one is the peach one, pink one, and this is the rose beige one. I'm gonna use rose beige on my cheeks today because it's my favorite one. And these ones, um, I mean, they're blushes. They're they're all matte. They are real, just like the eyeshadow is really soft and smooth. These ones are a bit, a bit more pressed, so it's not gonna be like an eyeshadow where it's like kicking up a lot of powder. So they're easy to build up to like the level of intensity that you want. What my favorite thing about these blushes though is that they're the color family that they're in. They add that like warmth to your face. And not warmth in the sense of like, oh, bronze or warmth, but like warmth like, uh, you know those are like really moody photo shoots that people do where they're like wearing like fall clothes and they're kind of just like, and they have like that really pretty like warm blush on their cheek. It's not like a, a, a bronzer, it's like a blush, but it's not the kind of like brightening blush. It's a kind of like warming blush. Oh, my camera ran out of memory. So I was talking for a while and didn't even realize it was a recording. <laughs> what did I say? I think I left off with the blushers. Uh, I like the blushers, it's just that I don't see them working on any person more than that's deeper than like a light medium skin. Because even when I'm swatching it on my finger like in there, it's still pretty um, light. Alright, now for my f one, my also other than the eyeshadows, I actually like everything in here, I like everything. The lipsticks, oh my god. This also has that really pretty, everything here has like the soft matte package. I love like it feels so sad. It's like not a click. It's not like magnet either. It's like this like suction and I like that. So they came out with five matte lipsticks in this collection and I have to say in the tube that looks so freaking pretty. You see that? It's so smooth. It almost looks like a play-doh clay almost but obviously not. It's a lipstick. Now the pigmentation of these is no joke but the thing is it's not one of the ones where you're like you glide it on and like pigment you have to, it does uh, drag your lips a little bit, so that's something you might- I don't really mind that much, but for some reason that's like a thing that some people care about, but for me, I don't care. They are a matte formula, so they are gonna kind of make your lips look a little bit dry. My lips are naturally really dry already, but the thing is, when you apply these, it kind of like flattens out the dead skin on your lips, but it doesn't smooth out like, you know, like the Peri Peta Airy Velvet Tints, how they smooth out your lips. These don't really do that, you can still see the cracks in your lips, but it smooths out the dead skin, so... I'm um, sorry guys, I stand corrected on that. They actually, with the heat of your, like the natural heat of your lips, it actually kind of melts down the lipstick itself. So after a few minutes of wearing it, it actually does smooth out your lips. It's just on first application, your lips are not gonna look super, like they're gonna look a little bit wrinkly. And for me, I do find I have to reapply them throughout the day. Um, it does last longer than a regular classic lipstick. Um, even despite through eating and drinking water, but I still would need to reapply only because I bite and like scratch my lips all the time and I'm always eating the lipstick off my lips even with tints so um, it's just a thing that I'm gonna have to run into. If you have self-control, you'll be totally fine. It's probably last on you all day if you're careful when you're eating. The color of the packaging is pretty representative of the color that's in the actual tube itself. As you can see. Oh my god, that's what, this one is especially pretty to look at. There's not really a smell. And all the colors here are kind of like, if you take like those regular color names and put the word burnt in front of them, that's kind of what you get. They're very terracotta-y, very like, I don't know, very earthy tones. And I, I think it's really freaking pretty. So we're gonna go through each one. <coughs> and I forgot to mention that this collection also comes with its own mirror. And this is a really big mirror. You need the entire, like your head in here. And so I think this is a perfect size mirror for, that is, I didn't really moisturize my lips prior, so we'll see. You get to see how it looks on like dry lips. But obviously, if your lips are pretty plump and like naturally moist, then you'll be fine. You see how it's kind of like softening my lips a little bit? Oh, I'm gonna freaking love this color. This color almost reminds me of No Makeup by Pony Effect, one of my favorite lipsticks of all time because it looks like natural, my natural lip color. But do you see there that? My dead skin looks smoothed out, but you can still see like the cracks in my lips. Oh my god, this is so this is so freaking pretty. So again, this is mirror-like. It's number 219, brilliant. This one drags quite a bit as well. Oh my god. <laughs> oh! 
This is so pretty. It looks like, what's that fruit? Is that a fruit? Persimmon? Is that what it is? This is what it kind of looks like. It's like a orange, if you want, if you're, it's almost like a nude orange, but not too orange, it's more like on the nude side. Oh my God, that's so good. It looks so well with these, this eyeshadow color as well. What am I doing? I'm kind of doing like a cross between full lip application and kind of a gradient. So again, number 219, brilliant. Thank God though, that these are lipsticks and not tints because these are like a million times easier to take off. This one I think is the one I had in the Peekaboo music uh, video reaction uh, video that I had on my channel, that I have on my channel. This is number 220, hit me up. One home. <laughs> Oh, bitch. Oh, I'm screaming on the inside right now. This is so good. This one is one of the ones, this is a really strong color for me. So this is one of the ones I would put, um, actually this one, I, actually I think that was a combination. I had this underneath first and I put this in the center and that's the color I got. This is one of the ones I would put um, in tandem with like a kind of more nude lip color. So I get a gradient, but this alone, oh my God. There's kind of, there's a kind of like 90s revival happening, 70s, 80s, 90s revival happening in fashion and <clears throat> in Korea right now, and I feel like, th and I felt like, and I feel like this is definitely like, if you are into that trend, I guess, or that look, this is very, this screams very like, like a mix between like 70s, 90s to me. I feel like it kind of reminds me of just like wood wall paneling and like floor rugs with like really tacky patterns on couches. And this is one of those uh, shades of lipstick that really brightens up your skin tone. Oh, I love it, I love it. Number 220, hit me up. This one is number 221, Mellow Flower, and this almost looks like, like this, but it's more of like a red version. This almost looks like a kind of more toned down version of Mac Ruby Woo. freaking low because I've been testing these so I don't really like take the time to actually look at the color I just see like do I like the color I grab it I put it on but putting it on right now like each individual one one by one really makes me appreciate like every color so if you are into like red lips but you want something that's not so bright um this is like the perfect shape because it's almost like a like almost like a nude red in a way because it's like that Mac Ruby Woo, like I was saying, like a really blue red lipstick, but it's kind of toned down in a way, like the chroma is lower. So it's, oh, oh, it's so good. Again, Mellow Flower. And then last but not least, number 222, Step and Go. This one's so sad. I accidentally left it in my pocket and no, no, no. I didn't uh, screw it down all the way. I didn't like lower the lipstick all the way and I put it, <laughs> you kind of see it in there. <gasps> that almost looks like a chapstick. But anyway, this is uh, Step and Go. And I think this might just be like a, like the last one, but it's more like a brick color. I think this is also one of the other ones that I really like to put in the middle of like a more nude color. Okay, um, honestly, I feel like this is just like a slightly deeper version of the last color. They're actually quite similar. Um, and I can't even say that they're slightly different undertones because they're pretty much the same undertone, if you like. This one is just a little bit more red. More more like, oh, this almost looks like Mac Ruby to me. Yeah, actually, you know what? Next to it, the last color looks a little, slightly more pink. That's what it is. So again, number two, <laughs> this looks so sad. Number 222, Stepping Gum. All right, so here's the finished look, and there was my review on the whole new mood recipe collection from 3CE. Honestly, there's not one thing I don't recommend in here. Um, the only gripes that I was having was again, the eyeshadow kind of falling apart. So you have to be extra careful with those. And the lipsticks, I I mean, I can't say, I wish they would last a little longer because for me, I just know because it's a lipstick, I can't expect anything, you know, less. If I really wanted it to stay, I would use maybe like a liquid lipstick. So I'm totally happy with these because oh, it's so pretty. This has got to be like my top favorite 
makeup release, even over Pony Effect in the last year. If you've been thinking about it, I'd pick it up, definitely. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!